ಓಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧಿ ತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿಶಾವೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಮೈ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಹಾಂಬಲ್ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿವೈನ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀ ಮಧುಸೂದನ್ ಸಾಯಿ ಜಿ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಫೌಂಡರ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸತ್ಯ ಸಾಯಿ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಗ್ರೀಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಬೋರ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಚಾನ್ಸಲರ್ ಟು ದಿ ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾರ್ ಇವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಯೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಗ್ರೀಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಡ್ ಇನ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ನಾಮ ಸಹಸ್ರೇಶು ಕಶಿತ್ ಯತತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧೇ ಯತಥಾಂ ಅಪಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಾನಂ ಕಶಿನ್ ಮಾಂ ವೇತಿ ತತ್ವತ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಮೇ ಎಂಡಿವರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಚೀವ್ಡ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಹಾರ್ಡ್ಲಿ ಎನಿ ಒನ್ ನೋಸ್ is is our efforts to know the truth and be the truth and what happens after knowing the truth from inside we are always feel divine we always feel that brahman or consciousness which is everything which is all pervading and from outside we always contribute to the world and sri satya sai university for human excellence main objective is to achieve this perfection is to come out with students who will be the atman who will be the truth with sadguru's grace and his constant inspiration many things we are doing in our university be it para vidya be it self development be it many co curricular activities and words of wisdom is one such initiative and activity where we get to meet great people ideal people who have practiced the truth and have been the truth and with swami's grace and with sadguru's grace so many speakers have come and gone and they have shared their insights they have shared their practical experience with us and today we have dr hira malini ma'am who is there with us is joining from mudinahalli we are very fortunate to have ma'am amidst us ma'am is so accomplished externally and also accomplished internally whenever i meet ma'am whenever i say our uh, response our instantaneous response will be that swami will be swami is the doer and swami is the doer such a great surrender such a sense of surrenderance is there for me it's a great quality which has to be emulated by all our boys and girls and ma'am is such a perfect example where outwardly she is contributing in every field be it writing be it singing be it her medical profession be it any field intellectual field any field she is contributing and from inside she is always connected to 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 that divine principle of sai baba to divine principle of god to divine principle of god consciousness and ma'am is a perfect example for 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 this truth for practice is in the truth here are a few words few words of introduction to ma'am no words will actually suffice for ma'am's contribution but here is a small attempt ma'am is mbbs from cmc bellur medical college and uh, she is md in general medicine and she is the first indian lady to be elected to the british society of rheumatology uk 1987 and she is one of the earliest rheumatologist in india and ma'am has lot of work experience in many domains she was consultant in many medical colleges hospitals clinics she was also visiting professor uh, visiting faculty in many universities and there are many awards to ma'am's name she is a distinguished alumnus award of kendriya vidyalaya 1989 and she is a marutava mamani award by citizens committee uh, chennai and she was honored by bhagwan sri satya sai baba along with other doctors during the silver jubilee of sri satya sai general hospital whitefield 2001 and along and again along with the doctors honored by bhagwan during the golden jubilee of sri satya sai general hospital prashanti nilayam for the service in 2005 along with other lady doctors honored on doctors day at tri brindavan uh, by bhagwan sri satya sai baba in 2003 she is also president of indian medical association of prestigious apollo 1000 lights branch for two terms so over to ma'am share her insights with us sir om um, shri sai ram most revered and beloved swami who is omnipresent and who walks the earth today as revered sadguru shri madhusudan sai revered chancellor vice chancellor 
and teachers of the Sri Satya Sai University for Human Excellence and dear students. Sai Ram forward to all of you. The topic for today's talk is the inner path to excellence in the outer world. One pilgrim's journey. Am I audible? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. You're perfectly audible. All right. Now, before I begin, let me thank Sun Bhupal, who said all those nice things about Dr. Hira Malini Seshadri. Yes, all of you have listened to the Master the Mind series by Swami. Well, I did too. I'm far from being a brother with, but I know one fact for sure that I am not Dr. Hira Malini Seshadri. This name form, Dr. Hira Malini Seshadri, is only a temporary character the Lord has created. It's not the real me. As the adage goes, Aham Brahma, Sarvam Brahma, Baki Sab Ishwar Ki Drama. In fact, right now, drama is happening. And you, all of you, me, we're all characters in the Lord's drama. So anyway, on behalf of that character, Dr. Hira Malini, I thank Sun Bhupal, another character in the Lord's play. Now coming straight to the topic of today's talk. First, let us see how Swami's teaching of master the mind relates to human excellence. Now, this journey that Swami has put all of us on to, the journey to Advaita, to oneness, that is real, the real journey to excellence. I would say to par excellence. You've heard the word, right? Par excellence. Or maybe we should call it para excellence. You see? So that para vidya journey, that is the real journey to par excellence or para excellence that we all have to make. And that is a lifetime's journey. My brief today, however, is to talk about excellence in the outer world, in the drama of life, in Dvaita, in duality. But even here, dear students, you will find that whatever Swami taught us through master the mind is very, very relevant. Let's look, I mean, what, what, is, what does one mean by excellence in worldly activities? From a student's point of view, might be excellence in academics, in, in science, in sports, yoga, dance, music, writing. And when you're a little older, maybe social work, business, as leaders of the country, and so on. Now, I should try and share my experience of how this character, Dr. Hira Malini Shadri, touched excellence in some areas in the drama of life, in academics and in career, in writing and in music. Now, this name form will be 65 years old next year, okay? So all of you are young enough to be my children or maybe my grandchildren. So today, this is not going to be a lecture. It's going to be more like a talk from say grandmother to grandchildren, okay? So now, now let me share with you, what led this name form to excellence? Are there any secrets? Yes, there are. First is that even for excellence in the outer world, the secret is to go inside. In is really the only way out. Secondly, you will realize that it is your heart that takes you to excellence, not your brain, not your head. Thirdly, there are certain values, simple values, that if you cultivate, they'll take you to excellence even without you knowing it. Like say simple faith, goodness, gratitude, a simple trust in God, trust in people. And of course, one has to be ready to give up the ego. And you will also realize that even pain, grief, anguish, negative situations, so to speak, can lead you to wonderful gifts of excellence, of miracles. I'll give you some examples from our life to illustrate these facts. 
Okay, when do students usually go inward and pray? Is it beginning of term, middle of term, or during holidays, or during exams? During exams, right? At your age, I too was like that. And most students, I used to pray more during exams. But looking back, I can say that there was one difference which made all the difference. Now, most of us, when we pray before exams, we tell our mind and God how big our problem is. Oh, Swami, I have not had time to revise calculus. Now, I've looked at trigonometry. Please make sure no questions come from there. Or maybe you say, I read organic chemistry, but I seem to have forgotten it all. My memory is so poor. Swami, please help me. We tend to tell God and our mind how big our problem is. But there is another way to pray. And inadvertently, without knowing it, I was praying that way. And this is to tell your mind how big your God is. I would say to my mind and to God in all sincerity and intensity, dear God, without you, I'm nothing. But God, you're with me. And because you're with me, I can do anything and everything. But there's nothing in the subject that you, God, you don't know. This exam is a breeze for you. And you're with me. In fact, you're doing the exam. And therefore, I cannot but do well. So I would walk into the exam hall with utmost supreme confidence. You see, that was the net result. I really believed that it was God who was doing all those exams. Naturally, how could I not win? The Sira Malini was the best outgoing student among all the nine medical colleges of Madras University then. Uh, won the MD prize. And as Bhopal said, I was the first uh, you know, Indian lady to be elected to the British Society for Rheumatology, blah, blah, blah. Of course, there was hard work, diligence, all that was there. But I think what tips balance was this total faith that God was doing everything. Much later in life, I attended some management classes and I realized that this is called the power of positive expectation. Our rishis knew this long back. They used to call it, like Swami says, Yadbhava Tadbhavati. So what can you learn from this? Tell your mind how big your God is, not how big your problem is. Okay? And see, it will make a big sea change in your life. And years later, I also understood that unwittingly, I had stumbled on something called the power of the word. Now, power of the word, what's that? I would say that is, it is really the single most important thing that I learned in the outside world. It's an amazing power, the power of the word that God has granted human beings. Now, how did this Hira Malini learn about the power of the word? Not at school, not at medical college. Maybe it's a story I should tell you. Stories help us remember things better, you see. And it will also show you the power of some simple values, like goodness, gratitude, and so on. My husband, Dr. Seishadri, also studied in CMC Vellore. And when he was in the second year, 18, 19 years old, like many of you, one morning he got a letter from his father conveying blessings, do well, my son, and so on. That evening, he gets a telegram. Father expired, come home immediately. Those were the days when, you know, no mobile phones, not even ordinary phones. He was shell-shocked. The person who helped him in that most tragic moment of his life was the elder brother of a classmate, a rich, wealthy businessman called Peter who lived in Chennai. He just took Seishadri under his wing, consoled him, rang up the family, got him to Chennai, got him a ticket to Vishakhapatnam because that's where the family was put him on the train, then informed him, did everything. Why? What did he have to gain from this poor medical student? Nothing. Just out of the simple goodness of his heart. Goodness for goodness sake. Now you'll see how many, many years later that was to help him. 
Now let's fast forward to 1991, 20 years later. And Seisha had finished studies, went to UK, became a psychiatrist. And finally, in 1991, we relocated to Chennai. Even 20 years later, there was so much gratitude in his heart for Peter that one of the first people he found out through the telephone directory, he found out his contact number, it was Peter's. But when we went to visit Peter, we got a shock. His big bungalow and cars, everything was gone. His business had crashed. He felt bad because he was such a good person. And around then, Swami had become the center of our lives. So we used to pray to Swami to do something good for Peter. And strangely, Peter, as his name implies, is a Christian, but he had some experiences and he used to, uh, he became a side devotee, so to speak, and he would come to bhajans. I remember we would pray together. One day, somewhere Peter met uh, Sishadri and said, I think at last my problems are over. I've joined a new business. So Seishadri said, very happy for you, Peter. Then Peter said, you also join. Seishadri was taken aback. He said, but Peter, I don't have that kind of big money to invest in any business. Peter said, then this is exactly the business for you. Seishadri said, I know nothing about business. I'll be doctors with no time, no interest, no nothing. Then Peter said, then you can't help me. The only thought process that went through Dr. Seishadri's mind was, here is the man who helped me in my most difficult hour of my life. Maybe God is giving me a chance to help him. So all he asked was, how much should I put in? It was a small amount. He said, okay, I'm in. Later that day, Seishadri told me, you know, we've joined a business. I was shocked. I said, what business? We doctors, we have no time. What did you join? And he said, oh, I forgot to ask. It never struck him to ask, you see. Then I said, why did you join? He said, to help Peter. Then I asked, how much are you putting in? It was a small sum. So I said, okay. Then, because we knew nothing about business, we were taken to some business classes. It was Bible-based business classes. And that is where we learned about this part of the word. Now, what is it exactly? It says, you must speak and write whatever you want, offering thanks to God, as if it's already happened. So first offer thanks to God, speak and write whatever you want, as if it has already happened. And you must do, do that on yellow paper with red ink. Why yellow paper? You don't ask, argue with the success principles. But if you've seen traditional Indian wedding invitations, how are they done? It's usually yellow paper and red ink, right? So our ancients knew all this. And so this was the theory classes, and then it came to practicals. We were told to stand up in public and declare, thank you, God. By God's grace, I'm already a champion in this business. I was not comfortable doing that. I thought, here yeah, we are just about starting. We are nowhere near any success. How can I say that? It's like telling a lie. And I refused. Our business guys didn't know what to do with me. And then Swami from inside said, or rather sent a message through someone, go to Ramakrishna Mat and buy Vishnu Sahasranama with word by word meaning and read it. So I did just that. The very first line answered my problem. What's it? Om Vishwam Vishnur Vashakaro Bhuta Bhavya Bhavat Prabhu, which means God is the master of past, present, future, everything. So if you say, thank you, God, by your grace, blah, 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 then anything is possible because God can make past into future, future into present, anything. And so we sincerely learned the power of the word and to now effort. And there was no looking back. We did well in that business as well. But most important, I realized that the power of the word, word worked in every aspect or every area of life. And that is really the most important lesson for all of you too. You know, we could even change the weather. 
Our daughter at that time was studying in the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. And there usually they have the convocation in the month of October when the weather is good in Delhi and all parents from all over the country can go for it. But in her year, somehow, this convocation was slated to happen on January 5th or something like that. And January 1st week, usually no flights land in Delhi because it's so freezing and foggy then. So my daughter said, Mama and Daddy, you, you are better you don't come because it's, the weather will be so terrible. We said, no way. We are going to be definitely come for your convocation. And we started writing. Thank you, Swami. We don't know how, but by your grace, the weather in Delhi became sunny and warm. And we attended the guest convocation and came back safe. Thank you. We just kept writing that. And you won't believe it. January 1st and 2nd, all flights cancelled. Third, our flight landed. It was nice and warm and sunny in Delhi. It was throughout. Our stay was warm and sunny. We left on the 6th or 7th. Again, foggy, freezing weather. You see? I then decided I must apply this to my practice of medicine. I taught my patients. If somebody had high blood pressure, besides taking medicines, I said, try to write this as well. Thank you, God. Medicines are working. My BP is now 120 by 80. Did everybody do it? No. You tell everyone to exercise, but does everyone exercise? Just like that. I remember one diabetic lady. She was in her mid-30s and her sugar was very high. And when talking to her, I realized that the real reason for her high blood sugar was stress the stress of a very cantankerous mother-in-law. Now, I had medicines for diabetes, but I didn't have any medicines for mother-in-law problems. So then I sat her down and I told her, do you take these yellow papers? And her Ishta Devata was Muruga, so I said, just write. In Tamil, you write. Dear Muruga, thank you so much. I don't know how, but by your grace now, mother-in-law is so sweet and kind and loving to me. Just write that. And I sent her home. She came after about a month and a half or two for a review. Sugars were much better. I'd forgotten about all this by then. And then I said, okay, I'm reducing your medicines. And I thought she'd get up and go. She wasn't getting up. Then suddenly she blurted out, Amma, can I have some more yellow papers? Oh, then it flashed. And then he, she said, you know, it really works. Now my mother-in-law is so sweet and kind and loving to me. I want to keep writing. So you see, what is the message for all of you children? Start writing your, your goals, your dreams. Write down whatever you want, as if it has already happened, giving thanks to God. For example, now, if, if your mathematics exam is coming, why not write? Thank you, Swami. By your grace, everyone in our class scored center in mathematics. Thank you. Write it. Visualize it. Visualize your report cards all with 100 out of 100. Vitalize it, make a few report cards and put it in the puja. Try it. You'll be amazed. It really does work. You see, look at the big companies, look at Google and Microsoft and Infosys and all that. If you go to their offices anywhere in the world, you will find mission statement, vision statement, goals, everything, you know, in beautiful plaques. It costs a lot of money to make those. Even at the toilet they put it. They're not fools. They are programming. All the employees are reading it. So they're all programmed for excellence, for success, okay? So even, even in India, our ancients knew it. They used to call it Vak Shakti. Now in Atharudra Mahayagya, what do we do? We chant something 14,000 something, something times. So there's power in the word. This is a blessing that all of us humans have been given by God. We have to learn to make use of it. Now, let me come to... Another very important thing, if we want to achieve excellence, and that is getting rid of ego. Now, this Hiramalli had to get rid of ego for Swami to use her as his pen. My writing career started somewhere when I was 18 years or so, as a medical student. I used to write humorous middles for the Indian Express, one of our national newspapers. And by my 30s, I was a modestly successful freelance writer. In 1991, Swami became the center of our lives. And we experienced every conceivable miracle. And I wanted to write about Swami and tell the world about him. 
And I wrote so many articles and sent it, sent it to all those papers and magazines that usually published my work. But to my dismay, every single article was rejected. I was very upset. And then I did some soul searching and I realized that maybe I had too much ego, that's why. But my crafty mind, instead of trying to put down the ego, it decided I'll never write about Satya Sai Baba. And that was it. But Swami was not to give up. One day when we were on our way to, just setting out for Puttaparthi for Seva, I think, there was a call from a publishing house and they said, it's our golden jubilee and we want to bring out a book on Bhagwan Satya Sai Baba and we want you to write it. I said, oh no, I can't, I can't write about him. But anyway, I'm going to put a party. So I wrote a letter to Swami. I said, Swami, you don't have to take this letter. If you want me to write that book, then I must be only your instrument. You must help me put down my ego and you must write it. If my ego is going to write it, I don't want, I'd rather not write it. And I was somewhere in some third or fourth row, promoted to first row, and he came like this, with a broad smile on his face. And there was no looking back after that. And being an instrument of Swami, being a pen in his hands, has been such a blessing beyond compare. So many books have happened. And even here, even after Swami's Samadhi, when I came to Satya Sai Grama, even at the very first darshan, I just knew those were Swami's eyes. I just knew it was Swami. And at the first interview, I, I could literally perceive him sitting on the chair. That's because when you're an instrument of Swami's and he's communicating with you and you're going inwards, you know, and getting all the information from him, you learn, you, you learn to perceive more than the ordinary, you see? And now I can see that interest in all of you. Can you see Swami? Can I also see Swami? Yes, it is possible. Every one of us can communicate with Swami. Every one of us can see Swami within. His grace is there for everyone. But we need to have two things. One, a great yearning. And secondly, you must be ready to go inwards. Okay, try your hand. I'll share my experience. In 1991, when Swami sort of became the center of our lives, I began devouring Sai literature. And many of the books were by Western authors. And many of them used to be able to communicate with Swami in meditation. Charles Penn in the USA was regularly in communion with the Lord, though he was more than 10,000 miles away from Puttaparthi. So I thought I must also try meditation. So I would wake up in the middle of the night. I knew nothing about meditation. So I would imagine that I've reached Puttaparthi, I'm going through the Ganesh gate, I'm going around the mandir. It was all imagination. But somewhere in the, along the line, I knew I, I was losing control. And then suddenly Swami would say something or speak to me or take me with him somewhere. Oh, it, those were fascinating days. I remember once he took me to my sister's house in the USA. I'd never been there. Years later when I went there, it was exactly how it was. When Swami took me there. One day he bought me an ice cream. I said, Swami, but it's the middle of the night. He said, no, in this part of the year, it's day. And we were in some, uh, somewhere in the Western Hemisphere. And once we were just going and going and going. And I said, Swami, where are we going? And he said, ah, this is Brahmanda Sanchara. So all this, in the morning, over breakfast, I used to tell my husband and my children, you know, Swami said this, and Swami took me here and there. And they would look at me like, you know, with a little smile and, you know, like maybe mama's going a bit soft in the head. But I thought, see, I'm in a way enjoying it. I'm not doing anybody any harm. So what's there? But I used to have a niggling doubt. Am I just imagining or going a bit crazy? It was somewhere around that time that the first book, God in Our Midst, got published. And then I received a phone call from Professor Nanjunda Rao, Professor Emeritus of Surgery of the Madras Medical College. Few words about him are in order. 
His grandfather, another doctor, Nanjan Rao, was one of those who sponsored Swami Vivekananda's trip to the US. And Dr. Nanjan Rao was a great Shirdi Baba and Satya Sai Baba devotee. Udi and Vibhuti used to materialize in his house. And Bhagwan Baba used to speak so highly of him because of the tremendous seva that he used to do. So he called me one day and said, well, Dr. Hira Malini, what is this? I hear you have written a book about Bhagwan Baba. You never told me. I said, oh, sir, uh, it just happened. Then he said, well, I have been told to purchase a copy and read it. I said, oh, okay, sir. Then he said, then I asked him, how, who told you, sir? And then he says, well, the old man told me. Old man? Then he said, every morning in meditation, I go to Puttaparthi. I fall at Bhagwan's feet and pay my obeisances. And then I go to Shirdi. And I fall at Baba's feet. And then we have a long chat. And Shiddhi Baba told me, Hira Malini has written a book about Satya Sai Baba. I want you to purchase it and read it. I was stunned. That Shiddhi Baba would mention, mention about this book itself was stunning. But more than that, I said, sir, your words, we don't know how much they mean to me. It meant that my, you know, my nocturnal excursions we're real, not just imagination, you see? So what's the message for all of you children? If Charles Penn and Dr. Nandan Rao and the Sira Marini and hundreds of others can do it, so can you. If you have the yearning and if you're ready to go with it, doesn't matter if you start with imagination, you can certainly communicate with the Lord. You can certainly see the Lord within you. But now there's a quick disclaimer. On a visit to Puttaparthi for Seva, Swami, in his own inimitable way, made me understand this. All this chatting with Swami and traveling the world with Swami and all that is not going to get you liberation. For that, only selfless service with selfless love is the way. And you have to experience oneness with everything, with everyone. Advaita, that's the only way to liberation. So then I slowly got out of this fascination for the mystical and I turned practical. I decided that I would make Swami my partner in all my waking hours, in regular life, practical life. So whatever I was doing, whether it's a big problem or a small problem, it didn't matter. Because my logic was he is anoraniyana, Mahato Mahiyana, right? So even if it was wanting to get a matching blouse fit, that was fine. Or if it was a patient who was very fit, sick and needed help, that was fine. Every problem I would pass on to Swami. He became my partner, my buddy, the managing partner in life. And that is something I really wish for all of you. Make God your partner, the managing partner in your life and see what kind of excellence and success comes your way. Amazing things will happen. And finally, let me share how pain, sadness, grief can also lead to excellence. If only they, trans they are transmuted, they are transformed into devotion to God. I had to move to hostel in CMC Bello at the age of 16. I used to learn, I used to be a good singer. I had learned music as a child, which was my hobby. But when I reached CMC, I was terribly, terribly lonely. It was a very westernized culture and I, I didn't fit in too much. And my only companions were a small vigraha of Shirdi Baba and a photo of Bhagwan Satya Sai Baba. And so there, singing became transformed from the mere hobby into devotion. My intense loneliness made me sing to Swami. And Swami did respond. He found a little samiti, a village samiti, where they used to say, Bajanai. You know, in Tamil, they say, Bajanai Panalam. You know? So I used to go there. And with those villagers, I even went to Putparthi and Whitefield and all that. I even asked Swami once straight to him, Are you really God? See, I wanted to know, and I thought the best is to ask him straight. But when I came back, 
in the library in our college, there was a very negative book, a very scary book. And then I put Swami out of my life. But the devotional singing continued. And Swami gave me many, many, many experiences in the form of Lord Narasimha, Rama, Krishna, Ambal, Hanuman, and so on. In 1991, the greatest tragedy in my life happened. I lost my mother suddenly. She was a sheet anchor of my life. And then I started reading Swami's books again, books on him again. And my question to Swami was, where's my mother? Is she okay? That's all I wanted to know. And one day in deep anguish, in deep sadness and grief, I sat singing to my little Shildi Baba Vigraha. And I said, show me a sign. And when I finished singing, there was this white powdery stuff. Put it on my tongue. Yes, it was Vibhuti. Long story short, thereafter, Swami just stomped back into our lives. And we experienced almost every conceivable miracle. Okay. And around then, I found that if I looked at Swami's picture and started singing, devotional music would come out like an outpouring. And after some time, these became pristine Carnatic music compositions, far beyond my ken. I did not have such jnanam and all that, but they were perfect. And I would sing them initially to a lady called Srimati Sulochana Patabhiraman, who was one of the foremost critics of Carnatic music attached to the Hindu newspaper in Chennai. She knows me, so she knew this music was something far beyond me. And she would say, Doctor, this is perfect. This is an act of grace. And uh, Varnams used to come, you know, they are very complex, uh, you know, Carnatic music uh, enthusiasts will know that. And Swami sent her Abhogi Varnam in Abhogi Ragam. So I sang this to Sulashna Mami. Then she said, Doctor, this is very good. But you know, the third Chittaswaram has to follow certain rules. And uh, this doesn't conform to the rules so much. So then anyway, after the phone call, I looked at Swami's photo and I said, Swami, the third Chittaswaram has to follow certain rules. This will not pass master, master with Sulosh Namami. This won't do. Immediately, new Swaram started running in my head. I quickly wrote it down, learned it and sang to her. Then she said, it's perfect, it's perfect now. So in ways like this, Swami would reveal that he was the higher source from which all this music came. Next, he arranged for concerts to happen. He blessed our son to be an excellent rhythmist, and my daughter would sing better than me. And a kind teacher agreed to play the violin because she liked the music. So there we were. And one concert led to another, to another. And we had more than 75 concerts in the leading venues. Okay? Mind you, here we are just amateurs. The leading venues at Chennai and other cities and even abroad. And there was no time to practice anything because I would come rushing back from hospital. Divya would come back from school and, and we would be rushing to a concert. And these were public events and in Swami's precious name. So they had to go well. There was no choice. So what did I do? Every time I would write a letter, Swami, you sang, you played the instruments, and you listened, and you blessed us all with the bliss of your presence and love. By your grace, I was a totally egoless and love-filled instrument. And you blew music through us. Thank you, Swami. And mind you, every concert was a resounding success. We even did a lecture demonstration at the Music Academy of Chennai. That's a mecca of music. Four Sangeeta Kalanidhis were there. And the Sangeeta Kalanidhi that year was Govinda Rao. And he said, these compositions are like those of the Trinity. I said, sir, I'm not surprised because I'm Maika Matram. These are Sai Skritis. Next, Swami sent three PhDs to write down all this music in notes with notation. And when the book was ready, I asked Salochna, Mami, you remember the critic in the Hindu? I said, Mami, you please write a foreword. 
And she knew that this music was not Hira Malik Rupees, it was her Sai Rupees. So she said, no, for this book, Shemmanguri Srinivasayar has to write the forward or a message. I said, Shemmanguri? She said, yes. Anyway, I went to him. He was 93 then. I sang a Varnam and I sang a Ganesha Kriti. He was impressed. And then my crafty mind thought to impress him. I thought I would sing a grand Shankara Bharanam Kirtanam, which Swami had sent on Padmanabha Swami. Why Padmanabha Swami? Because I knew he had been the principal of the music college at Thiruvananthapuram. But from inside, Swami said, No, ni Sarva Sukhadaini Padar. You sing Sarva Sukhadaini. With Swami, you don't argue. So I sang Sarva Sukhadaini. When I sang the Varnam and Ganesha Kriti, he was impressed. But when I sang Sarva Sukhadaini, tears coursed down his cheeks. And Samaguri said, Oh, child, in Tamil, he said, You have the blessings of Ambal. I have been worshipping Ambal for 77 years. I want to hear more. Come and sing in my house one evening. I didn't know that. See, Swami knew. That's why he made me sing Sarvasukha Daini. And so one evening, Divya and I singing, Sri Ram Rudangam, Karthik, another boy on the ghatam, and our teacher on the violin. We went, we had a chamber music concert in Shemmagudi Srinivasayar's house. And he invited one guest. Guess who? M.S. Subalakshmi. Look at that. This is a musical Leela of the Lord. The two greatest living legends of Carnatic music, M.S. Subalakshmi and Shemmagudi Srinivasaya, they are sitting and listening while we amateurs, we sang. And they loved the music. They both of them sent messages. And Bhagwan at Puttaparthi signed it and released it. What is the message from this? That Bhagwan can make anyone do anything. Any ordinary person, he can lift to the heights of excellence, to the heights of success. But for that, as I said, try to just be an instrument in the Lord's hands. So, dear children, you know, if you follow some of these principles, you can reach far greater heights. Here in Mudrahali too, this, this music that I was talking about has played a role. The books got over and there were no digital copies and I don't have Jnanam to do, it, to do the notation. So I prayed to Swami, Swami is, if you don't do something, this music will go back to the Nada Brahman from which it came. And then a young man of 87, Dr. Madhunath, he took it into his, uh, you know, he brought up the idea that making an e-book and got it done. And Bhagwan in Premamrutam released it. And then when I said, Swami, these are Sai Kritis, he declared, these are Satya Sai Kritis. So they are his. We just, we just limit the matra to bring out these things. And the students who are there with Swami now, Swami has handpicked, chosen every single one of you. And if you just surrender, and if you just make him the managing partner in your life, you don't know. I mean, excellence is a poor word you will all reach para excellence in life. Well, I think time is sort of ticking away. So what is, what is the summary of all, all that I spoke to you today afternoon? There are basically seven points. Even for excellence in the outer world, remember the secret is to go in words. Secondly, follow your heart. It is your heart that will lead you to excellence, not your brain, not your head. Remember Dr. Seshadri's story? Little values of gratitude, goodness, trust can take you places. Make God your buddy, your partner, your managing partner in life. 
then use the power of the word vak shakti that's something god has blessed all of us with use it get rid of ego and then the lord will use you as his instrument and then remember anguish grief problems can catapult you to success beyond your imagination i never ever dreamt that i'd be become a musician so to speak but that's what happened and that can happen to you too so if any of you has problems you've lost a, love, a loved one you're, you're in anguish you're in grief you have some problem transform it into devotion to the lord and see what happens those of you who don't have problems don't worry you don't have to have problems in life okay but if you have a passion you're passionate about yoga or you're passionate about dancing or writing or singing or whatever do that follow that passion with your heart but with god for god by god through god as god and see where it gets you as i said for all of you it's not excellence par excellence is where you're going to reach par excellence and i think uh, bhopal i think we've come to the end of our time so thank you so much thank you swami i always believe that he is the one who does things through me and now if you have any questions i'll pray to swami and try and answer them thank you saira uh thank you ma'am on the behalf of all students boys and girls for their who have joined from different campuses and from nalakadra nilli and mudinalli dominantly ma'am as you said the objective of our university is yoga ha karma su kaushalam perfection in action is yoga and perfection can happen when it is driven by inside from within from inward uh it's a, it was a really wonderful talk and you have given us the benchmark a bit more benchmark that is para excellence or par excellence where the inward consciousness or the inward uh, voice will direct our life it's so it was so nice ma'am the power of word or the power of positive expectations or power of going inside it was a wonderful talk and there are many lessons for all of us especially i learned many lessons especially the power of word i'll try to practice it see that uh where it goes there are a few questions which have come to my whatsapp chat so i la uh the first question is uh sairam ma'am the first question is we go inside sometimes like the inward path experience will happen only sometimes but how to consistently experience the inward voice how to practice or how to perceive the inward voice with consistency is the question yeah see everything is practice everything is practice initially when i started going in what i was imagining i was imagining that i was going to but the imagine that i had reached there okay but gradually gradually you will realize that somewhere it is it was it is uh, your ishta devta your consciousness your god is your swami who's talking to you your heart will know it okay and then as i said swami from the mystical he put me next on to the practical instead of these nightly surgeons i started involving in him in my day to day activities okay swami i'm trying to go to hospital now yes let's go to hospital whatever is doing there's a continuous inner chat going on with swami continuous okay so it's it's is as i said your yearning i wanted to be with swami there are no two ways about it okay i mean chennai and kotapatti are so many uh, hundreds of miles apart there's no way i could have gone and been physically in kotapatti but i wanted to be with him that yearning was there so if that yearning is there then it will be a continuous effort on your part right swami says yes to whatever you say if you say swami on the occasionally he'll also say yes occasionally if you say swami swami continuously no he's also there so i i think it's basically our our little that little step that we have to take i don't know if i yeah it was that answer helped yeah we need to practice and we have to 
say yes swami 24 into 7 i remember once he was telling uh, human excellence is not just graduation internship post graduation and phd he said it's a lifelong dedication and 24 hours dedication to his mission to his cause and to his principle so as you said it's this is what is the step for uh, continuous inner uh, voice so the second question is ma'am in the times of extremities extremities uh, both in criticism and appreciation we tend to forget or lose the connection inside so what is your uh, advice usually in you know in bad times we always remember god that's usually not a problem in fact the more severe your problem you will definitely remember it's in the good times that we tend to forget him you see at least that's been my my experience if something went well ah you just felt good you in fact you forgot to thank god at that point in time so that's what we have to consciously learn in bad times i bet your bottom dollar you'll remember god <laughs> okay but in these in when things are going well when success is coming your way that's when you have to consciously consciously remember that it's god and pass on all the credit to him because we cannot even make our heart beat for one minute right so uh, constant uh, uh, practice of our you know of the limitations of this human body of the limitations of the human mind what he's taught us these days is i find it very helpful one is you know the nirvana shataka manobuddhya hankara every day every day in the morning once just go through the meaning of it you know sing it to yourself then another one which has helped me a lot is the prata smara again by shankaracharya especially that last uh, stanza uh, where he says prata namami tamasa paramarka varnam purnam sanatana padam parama purushottam akhyam ஜிஸ்ரிஸ்ட have made me and help me understand that so and here again it's continuous manana practice 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 then you have a bit of a glimmer of understanding will we forget of course do i forget for certain but then you remind yourself and then as swami says na grace marks are there he'll help us pass yes ma'am uh this is my question ma'am it's not students this is my personal question sometimes what happens with us is we we live in the narrow mindset like we get into all this and the warden of university or i'm the phd scholar we tend to live in a narrow walls how to have a broader uh, horizon of thinking no, we, or we just have to see we just have to see swami in everything and everyone swami the kind person swami the murderer swami the thief swami the you know jealous swami the unkind swami the stupid swami the brilliant you know everything because all these things uh, what swami says is they actually don't exist and, and ultimately everyone is that supreme atman but is all this is his drama i mean i uh, if i may just take a minute i yes, this is my understanding this is what i t- told swami in wordly as well swami earlier on we used to think you are brahman you are god and we are your creation and this is a drama we agree we are all just acting uh, maybe singing dancing uh, doctoring lawyering whatever teaching okay but mind you we uh, now the understanding is totally different now aham brahma aham brahman and you gopal you also brahman swami also brahman but swami is the one who's acting they are teaching uh, doing a lawyer's work doing a doctor's work doing a sweeper's work you know creating this entire drama the plot the characters the lines the script the everything you see we are just attributeless brahman so we had just have to uh, keep telling us 
reminding us is that we just be attributeless Brahman and go through this drama because he's 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 the one he's casting the you know roles and he's playing the roles as well. Everything is done by him. So you see, it's just a, a reverse. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Sairam, ma'am, how do you manage the time being a medical practitioner, a kinetic singer, a writer, and many more things? Don't you get exhausted? The secret is I don't. I don't manage the time. See, when Swami wants something done, he just gets it done. You have to be a willing instrument. That's all. Of course, I mean, writing, I have sat up sometimes 2 a.m., 3 a.m., writing, yes. And music also, prior to sing all the time whenever I can. But time, it's, he's a kala kala enama, kala mahirava enama, he's in you know, a lot of time. So once you submit to Swami, he, he makes sure that there's, that there's enough time for everything. The secret is him. You see? And then everything will happen. That, that's my little humble understanding of things. See, as a human being, as a lady, I can't even make one sambar properly. That is a little big exercise. And what of all these things? So it's all, you know, it's, it's, it's a different, uh, you know, it's a different, it's, it's, it's not us doing it, certainly not. It's, but we have to be willing vehicles. We just have to stop uh, being obstructions to it. That's all our, our cameo role. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I think I'm done with questions. It was such a wonderful talk, a great satsang for all of us. And we look forward for more such sessions, even in the future. And uh, thanks a lot from all behalf of all the students, staff, and all the staff uh, students of Satisai University for doing excellence. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we will end this session. Yeah, we will end this session with the uh, Sahana Vavutu prayer. I request all the students to chant it in their respective places. Om Sahana Vavutu, Sahana Bhunatu, Sahaviryam Karavavahai. Tejas Vinavadi Tamastuma with Vishava Ai Om Shanti 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 Samastaloka Sukhino Bhant. Thanks a lot, man. Sairam. Sairam.